Welcome or welcome back to Divine Mother Healing Temple Tuesdays. I'm your host, Kendra. And um, today we are going to be working on healing the belief that we aren't allowed to have everything that we ever desired. And right before I came on, um, there was, um, when I asked for a message, I heard, if you are waiting for the outside to be still, for you to be still inside, you're always going to be waiting. And so, just see how that applies to your own life and how we manifest a lot of distractions. Um, like manifesting the heat coming on right now um, in order to to keep ourselves safe keep ourselves from um, branching out or trying things new things and so the cards that we got today are Archangel Michael trusting heaven you are safe angels are close surrender your concerns allow a miracle to occur The Holy Spirit, expect miracles. Hmm, two miracle cards. Remember that only love is real. Miracles will occur naturally. Spirit has your back. And Bridget, inner strength. Move back to wholeness. Recognize that you have the power. So as we're, we're coming in and just taking a couple of centering breaths and in your, your conscious mind, I would like you to feel when was the first time in your lifetime in the here and now that you felt like it wasn't okay to have what whatever it was that you desired or you know maybe you can't you can't be what you wanted to be when you grew up or go back to the first time that you felt that feeling I bet that all of us can look in our lives and see just probably this week where we have desired something and we've told ourselves that we weren't allowed to have it. So where did this belief come from? So for me personally, I remember when I was growing up, I always carried around my, um, my little um, boom box with a microphone and I would go to my mom's house and even just talking about it, it's coming up in my throat. <clears throat> and I would go to my mom's house and she had a two story um, apartment. And so I would go out on her balcony and I would sing the Sinead O'Connor song and I would see like crowds full of people. And I just always, I always believed that I was going to be a singer and a dancer when I grew up. And um, I was in the backseat of my mom's car and her best friend said, Kendra, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, a singer and a dancer. And my mother was like, absolutely not. That is not a real job. Like stop living in your daydreams and fantasies and I'm like I'm four and what I'm not allowed to be this and so I remember consciously making this belief at that moment of oh I'm not allowed to have everything that I ever desired and I'm also not allowed to tell people what it is that I want I need to go in the back door in order for it to be safe for other people to not take it away from me and so we make these beliefs, you know, before, um, before our prefrontal cortex is even fully developed, you know. So a lot of these belief systems come in 
and then they go and block us from the things that we desire and it doesn't even make sense to our like logical or conscious mind and um, because I put I put this um, like I was going to awaken the sleeping world with my voice <laughs> um, and I only put that on my path and so what I manifested like the next week was um, a near-death experience where I was um, riding my trike and um, this boy he stuck a stick in my tire and I flew over the handlebars and he took this rock and and beat me over the head with it and then he molested me and I almost died I my consciousness was floating outside of my body and I got all the way to the top of the apartment buildings and then this angel came to me and she said it was okay for me to go back to my body and um, I just from that time period until I was about probably to just a couple of years ago I lived kind of like half alive or like half in this reality of um, just um, having one foot in and one foot out and so look in your own life where um, you know and we think that like terrible things happen and it's just like coincidence or whatever and it's never it's like when you're signaling to the universe or to God that you're done expanding here on this planet. You manifest things like near-death experiences um, because it's to shake you awake. It's not to punish you. It's to, to give us another choice to choose for us to be more conscious about what it is that we're sending out into the world. And so um, I would just like to invite us all to take a couple of centering breaths now that you have um, that first memory that you want to work on, that belief system. If you're having trouble with this, just think of some, just think of, you know, what it is that you desire to share with the world, but you tell yourself you're, you're not good enough or um, it's not time yet. Just look at all of the ways that we block ourselves. And so just dropping into our, our breath, breathing 10 times in the nose and out the mouth. And I'll do this with you. In the nose, out the mouth, 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 in the nose, and hold. And it out the mouth. Clearing the root. And the sacral. the solar and the heart and the throat and the third eye.
and the crown. And just visualize that pathway lined with trees. and then stare at this flame. Like you're walking into this flame. Just becoming one with this flame. And as you're walking down this pathway, lined with trees into this beautiful flame. Allowing yourself to go back to that memory where you made this negative core belief that you weren't allowed to have everything that you ever desired. Just seeing this flame like a doorway opening up. that place inside of your consciousness. So just be there now. And if you can't think about what this memory is, just allow it to come to you. Ask God to guide you. <sighs> and just allowing yourself to see yourself as a chalice, dumping out all that's been in your cup, and then opening yourself up, calling in Mother, Father, God to be here with us now, creating a sacred container for this healing for the highest and best and greatest of all good, calling in the presence of Yeshua ben Joseph or Jesus the Christ to lead us through this process and allowing for the Divine Mother, the Holy Spirit of God to descend upon our being. Anyone that desires healing from this space, just say yes and allow the Divine Mother to transmute and alchemize anything that no longer serves you. So coming into that memory, And allowing for it to show you, you know, like for the memory that I just shared with you guys. For a long time, I was doing a specific kind of therapy. And when the therapist would bring me back, this was the first memory that kept coming up. But it didn't make sense to me because there were so many other things that happened that were so much more um, traumatic and so just trust what it is that is coming up because I think often we brush the things off that made the most impact in our our belief systems we brush it off because it doesn't feel like a, a significant traumatic event So going back to that, that memory, what was happening? How old are you? Was it your parents? In this memory? Who was it that told you? you weren't allowed to have everything that you ever desired.
going over the course of your life, can you see how this negatively impact every decision that you made after that? Hmm. If you could change this memory to make it into something positive, how would you rewrite this memory? So for me, um, when I shared that, my mother would have turned around and said um, that's an amazing dream let me help you let me get you into classes where you're um, you know taking singing lessons or um, let me get you into dance classes or just something other than no you're not allowed to have that And it's easy to say, okay, well, I'm an adult now, so I just won't believe that. But like for me, it shaped the way my um, vocal cords developed. People say that I have a very um, young sounding voice. And I think I've always had a younger sounding voice, like in all of my lifetimes. So see how this negative core belief has affected the jobs that you've taken, maybe affected you going to a specific school or what about in romantic love how did it affect choosing partners maybe you never allowed yourself to um, go after a partner that you deeply desired because of this belief. How has this belief changed the way you embrace your own light? How has it impacted the way you share your light with others? So allowing yourself now to rewrite this, this memory. And allow it to play out until the end. Allow yourself to breathe in this new experience. Allow yourself to feel it inside of your body, what that would feel like. Now I can hear some of us saying things like, our negative core beliefs have um, saved us from making or like um, there's just this faulty belief system again it's like um, it kept you small so that you didn't do something stupid
So when you have this memory rewritten in a, a more pleasant experience, see your life. Um, how does rewriting this belief change or impact the course of your life? knowing that you are worthy to have everything that you ever desired. Does that change what you're doing in the world? The way that you're sharing your light? Can you see how even if you're doing what you're meant to be doing, you still hold yourself back? You assume that not everyone desires what you have to share. You forget that you came here to impact the entire world with your light. That you have a voice that needs to be heard because it awakens the sleeping, sleeping world. We're just going to clear the throat. <clears> Throat. <sighs> and I'm just seeing you all as children and I'm seeing you all playing on a playground and I'm just coming to to be with all of you and seeing how each of you express your insecurities in different ways in different moments and just being there to encourage you to encourage you to to be more of who you are and seeing sometimes when when that insecurity can manifest in attacking other children and stepping in and and encouraging the child to to put down those those weapons those defenses against love and just looking over the course of your life or when you were a child when you experienced getting in trouble for playing or getting in trouble for being too loud or too happy. You know, maybe your mother was lacking a lot of resources emotionally and so your excitement irritated her. And so just allow those memories to come up. And just allow me to step in in those moments and comfort you in a way that makes you feel safe to continue to play and be nurtured and to be witnessed for who you truly are. allowing for you to know and understand how incredibly lovable you are. 
I'm putting this beautiful bubble of love pink orb around you to allow you to go through your childhood and play and be rambunctious or hyper or whatever it was that you did be happy without anyone shaming you or getting mad at you for feeling however it is that you are feeling can even be negative emotions you know um, some of us grew up in households where our anger was not acceptable and yet anger is a valid emotion and anger gets us out of powerlessness we have to get angry in order to get out of powerless now we don't need to get angry and take it out on people but we need to allow ourselves to feel our emotions and so uh, for me growing up i had a mother who listened to me singing Sinead o'connor and that elicited a lot of emotions inside of her that she didn't want to feel and so she would look at me and she'd be like, ugh, mushy, gushy, ugh, and want to push me away. And she was a master at avoiding all of her emotions. And it has manifested in her ailments that she sees within her body. And now she comes to me and asks me to help her. And she is learning how to accept her emotions. She only allowed for... Um, happiness and excitement or anger and rage and there was not really um, a container for anything in the middle and um, sadness always turned to rage for her so um, you weren't allowed to be sad around her um, so just see how how that's impacted you and if there's any emotions that you really reject or push away see how that was probably your parents that didn't allow for that or you know when you were feeling sadness it got you sent to your room so it got you rejected from love So just see any of your, now a lot of the times when we're not allowed to, like for me personally, um, you know, and here I was the expansion for my mother um, because she was so focused on avoiding her emotions. And then she gets a daughter that comes in that is like full bodied all of her emotions and I feel everything deeply and I allow every emotion to penetrate every ounce of my being as I run it through my body. I don't hold on to them. I feel everything deeply and I feel that this is the only way that we allow for ourselves to, because our, our emotions are our compass. It's, it's how we, we navigate through this, this physical realm. And so when we experience our emotions, we get to bring it up and look at it. And it's like gold. It's telling you something. What is it telling you? And it's through us allowing ourselves to have our emotions that we understand ourselves. When we understand how to navigate um, our preferences and our experiences. I assure you, you do not want to be without emotions. It is only our, our resistance to our emotions that feels negative. So whatever emotions weren't allowed, allow your inner child to experience those emotions in a safe container. This will also open you up to healthier ways of expressing your emotions. Um, when we don't allow ourselves to have all of our emotions, we, um, we run like my mother did um, for a long time, which taxes your nervous system. 
amongst a lot of other things but um you know it, it puts you on this um like two seconds away from from like losing control like at any moment and so um yeah, just see how in giving yourself a safe container to express all of your emotions, how you can come up with new, healthy, healthier solutions to experience your emotions without taking it out on other people or reacting or, um, you know, losing control. And now looking at the way that that you love others how has this negative core belief affected the way you've loved people have you maybe kept yourself at a distance thinking that if people get too close they won't they won't like you Is there an underlying belief that you're like fundamentally flawed? But you can love this one aspect of yourself. Often when we like to spend a lot of time alone, it's because being around other people makes us exhausted because we are putting on a facade. Or we may be telling ourselves that people can only handle us in small doses. And so look at how you've kept yourself away from the things that you've truly desired. Like for me, making that negative core belief that I couldn't go after everything that I ever wanted. That if I wanted it, it had to be secret and I had to go in the back door. And so that made me um, go after romantic relationships in this like sneaky way of like, I couldn't be direct and um, I would be like chasing people, but they didn't know I was chasing them. And they'd turn around and I'd run away. And so um, really facing this 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 um, negative core belief and changing it has helped me to, and it still feels like, um, like, ooh, am I allowed? Am I allowed to say this? Am I allowed to go directly for this? Um, am I allowed to be so direct? Am I allowed to be so clear in knowing what it is that I want? Um, am I allowed to share it with other people or is that going to get taken away from me if I do? And, and just little by little, just allowing yourselves to have like small doses and seeing that it's safe. This allows for us to find full integration and healing. But we won't know until we try. And so see um, a romantic partnership that you've desired that you didn't allow yourself to have and see them meeting you at the altar of God not like getting married unless you feel like you should marry this person then go ahead and just while you have them face to face just sharing with them how you feel what it is that you desire and being able to really receive their response 
it's so interesting because, you know, see how that response makes you feel. And if they're like, oh my god, I'm in love with you too, if that makes you feel tense, or if that makes you feel like a relief, or if they're like, I'm not interested, does that make you feel tense, or does that make you feel relief? You know, because you may be saying you want something, but really, um, either you don't believe you can have it, or you're just putting your, your, um, it's like a, a, a coping mechanism or a form of self-sabotage to, um, to put your attention on something that you don't believe that you could ever have. And so, for me, my, um, my connection to spirit is so, um, full on that, um, I can be very clear in the spirit, but when it comes to the physical realm, sometimes things don't make sense. And so, um, for me, I have been very clear about not getting lost in like creating a, a, a relationship in the spiritual realm um, and like pretending in the physical realm. Instead, I've, I've just allowed for um, the spiritual realm to develop, but for the physical realm to confirm. And when um, the physical realm of things started to manifest what I was already feeling in the spiritual realm, and my body's reaction was to push it away, um, I had to really go deep and find what it was inside of me that was um, pushing it away. And it was an entanglement of um, this negative core belief that I'm not allowed to have everything that I ever desired. And this um, visceral um, uh, instinct of, of running and the vomit instinct when um, a feeling of love was experienced because love was dangerous and it was physically abusive. And so for me, I've had to unravel this mess of like entanglements. And so um, just know that your body is not just reacting like that because it's like it's malfunctioning it's attempting to keep you safe and so we have to do our work to look to see what is what is um making us or eliciting us to react and respond in certain ways and so just feeling what you feel inside but allowing yourself to have that experience. And if you really tune in, you can hear what the other person's response would be if you're not attempting to be in a like a fantasy. Like you know if you're going after somebody that's not interested. You know um, if you're going after somebody that is interested but they have no idea because you haven't been forthright. So, allow yourself to feel what it is eliciting within your body. And then make a conscious choice to go forward with this person. taking physical action in the physical realm of things and feeling in your body what writing that that memory of of love and respect and safety what with somebody that is um, 
like everything you ever dreamed of? What does that feel like viscerally inside of your body? And then just holding on to that feeling flavor and rewriting that into your root chakra. because it broke, so. Into your third eye. And into your crown. self into your embodiment mm. <sighs> now see all of the new pathways that are now lining opening up all the different directions that you may travel. Things that you didn't see before. And just making an agreement with yourself that you aren't going to um, continue to repeat these these patterns um, living inside of these negative core beliefs that don't serve you allowing for you to take small steps or maybe big ones in order to give yourself a new experience 
where you get to rewrite a new a new felt experience so you can't tell yourself the story any longer that you're not allowed to have everything you ever desired and just feeling that that bliss and anchoring it down through your body down 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 and seeing this beautiful light going out of your feet down 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 to the crystalline core of this earth and plugging yourself into the crystalline core of this earth plugging in all of those new timelines Mm. And whenever you're ready, just seeing that fire path, just allowing this fire to burn away anything that, any residue that doesn't serve you, allowing for this, this Christ flame to be born in you today. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling hot, that's perfect. It's exactly where you need to be. That means your body is healing. And just coming back into your body and feeling where you are in your time space reality and taking a couple of breaths and stretching just coming back to this here and now moment if anyone would like to to share their experience what they saw what they experienced knowing that sharing your experience really helps others and I will pull up your comments I finally found you live awesome um, if you turn on the notification bell, you'll get a notification every time I go live. So, you could do that. Um, hello, first time catching you live. Oh, two people. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, my third eye and crown needed it after the lion's gate and full moon. That was really something. That felt good on the crown. I'm not sure which part you're talking about. Are you talking about the bowls or the tuning forks? Um, beautiful candle. Thank you. It's my daughter's. It has all these crystals in it. And somebody in Montana made it for her for her birthday. I probably shouldn't be using it. Um... You've been attacked from a very early age. What that means to me is that you are a serious threat to the establishment. Yeah, I guess you could say that until they realize that I can help them. Um, I was way too happy as a child. For some reason, they had to put an end to it. Well, I mean, just think about, like, um, it's really, it's really easy to understand this when you have, uh, children of your own or when you're watching children. And it's one thing to be around children when you're in a super high vibe and you have a lot of energy, but when you're trying to do the dishes and get the house cleaned and the children are running around and they're really excited and having a great time but maybe they're making a mess or they're they're hyping up the dog or whatever and it's it's stressful 
And so we have to understand that the way that people, um, adults and stuff, experienced us and reacted to us, it has nothing to do with who we are. And so we just have to look at these, these negative core beliefs that we made and making them the bad guy and the reason why we won't go after everything that we ever dreamed of. You know, it's it's really um, a form of self sabotage. If if I were to, um, you know, never have made a YouTube channel and never shared my voice because of that negative core belief that I made when I was four years old, you know, even though it's not singing, it's still using my voice. And so I could have allowed that to be a crutch that I I never overcame and just kept putting it on my mom. And every time that I was turning down offers or whatever, I would be projecting that hatred onto my mother, which it's not, that's not okay for us to do that. We have to understand that we're co-creating these experiences. And so if we allow ourselves to be damaged and live um, from that space of not allowing ourselves to have everything that we ever desired and really getting out of our own way, thinking that it's selfish it actually isn't. It actually makes this world a better place when we allow ourselves to have everything we ever wanted. Now, it's different if, if what it is that you want hurts others or takes away from others or um, you just want it for you. But, I mean, to have, um, to have your ideal um, job or career where you are expressing your highest form of light and you're giving back to the world that makes the world a better place so going after that directly makes the world a better place it's actually selfish of you to hold yourself back and then you having that that relationship of your dreams going directly for whoever it is that you desire it makes the world a better place because not only does it get you bringing those those desires into the physical realm so you're bringing it down to this dimension to share that frequency with others but also you have the opportunity to now live as the walking embodiment of that divine love and other people are going to be impacted by that and yeah of course um knowing that if you've ever had your heart broken then you're going to have that fear about well, what happens if it doesn't last or if you get your heart broken again but you won't know until you try and um if you continue to live thinking that everyone's going to break your heart you know i think that when we get to a certain level of consciousness where we we know ourselves enough to not lose ourselves in relationships that we only are um we only gain from our relationships instead of because we're not looking for another person to complete us and we're not looking for somebody else to meet our needs. So it, it's, it's less likely that somebody's going to let you down. It's more of a compatibility thing. It's more of a, oh, well, we just don't vibe or we do. And then we have the potential to, to be that, that light for others where people go, wow, true love really does exist. And I don't have to settle in this loveless marriage where we're both like, you know, roommates and teaching our children that that's what love is. And therefore, they are going to think that, you know, to go outside of that kind of love is not natural. It's not going to be programmed within them. So then therefore, they're never going to go after divine love. So we have to be the ones to break these cycles. We have to be the ones to be brave enough to go after um, writing this, this highest expression of love here in the physical dimension. So, um, so you said the tuning forks. Um, so does anybody want to share what they experienced? Going once. Okay. Well, I'm in my new space, as you can see. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you guys next week. Um, the link for joining... Oh, you recently had a big heart chakra upgrade and release and it felt the grief I was holding from all of my relationships. Yeah, not just this lifetime, all of your lifetimes. 
Lots of tears, no idea I was still holding on to that. Wow, that's so beautiful. Yeah, just allowing it and like not shaming ourselves. Like sometimes when we don't have like, oh, this just happened. So we understand why we're feeling like sadness or grief or whatever it is. Um, a lot of the times I feel like with the analytical mind, it wants to go make meaning to things. And so it doesn't allow for us to just have our raw emotions. It has to go and place a meaning for it. It's like, no, you're allowed to just feel grief. You're allowed to just feel a sadness. But it's when we start judging it that we hold on to it or we run from it. So I think that's beautiful that you really allowed yourself. And for us to not go, oh my God, I'm feeling bad, so something must be wrong. No, there is no good or bad. <laughs> like it, an emotion is just an emotion. It is something that you, you might be picking up on um, the feeling flavors of the collective, or it might be something within you, but it's, it's gold because it's our, it's, our, um, it's our map here. It's telling us something. So when we learn how to navigate without getting distracted by our emotions, um, they become our friend instead of something we're, you know, our enemy. So um, the new link for to sign up for Divine Mother Healing Temple Tuesdays is um, Divine Mother and then T U E S dot Eventbrite dot com. And it will be the same link every week because I was getting ridiculous how it kept changing. So I love you guys. And if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one or join any of my courses, you can visit KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com.